Hi everyone. Okay, we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to move on to talking about citing references. Now remember that I told you in class, and I really do think this a visual is kind of helpful. So take out a piece of paper as if it's just like a timeline. And right in the middle of that timeline, I want you to put the case that you are researching. Not your client's case, but like let's say you're doing research and you come across Costa versus Red Sox. And you write right in the middle of the page, you take that one straight line of piece of paper, take a little mark and write Costa, and then write 2004, right in the middle of it. So if that's your timeline, what we need to know is what has happened, how have other courts treated this Costa decision since 2004? What has happened since that time until the present? And the backwards way of saying that is that we want to know what future precedent, what future, I'm sorry, what future cases have cited Costa as precedent. When we look at the four corners of Costa, it won't tell us that. So for that, we want to look at citing references. Now you can see how Westlaw lays this out for you with the button for citing references and a total next to it. If you hover your mouse over citing references, Westlaw will then break down for you exactly what future sources have cited Costa and what they're called. So we can see that a total of 21 court decisions have cited Costa, but also 10 trial court orders, 35 secondary sources, 46 appellate court documents, and 53 trial court documents. Everything on here is really, these are not going to be your mandatory authority. Appellate and trial court documents are likely briefs that other attorneys submitted to court where they cite Costa. That's not authority for us. There's no reason to look at that. Secondary sources we will talk about later this semester, and you, you may want to look at secondary sources knowing that they are persuasive, but you may want to read what somebody wrote summarizing Costa. Trial court orders, again, we're talking persuasive only, lowest level. So whenever you're looking at citing references, your head should automatically go to what cases, because that's where our authority is. And there's only 21. That's not so bad. So if we click on 21, Westlaw will default to give us all 21. Now again, let me show you the, the default layout, and then you can edit this to whatever you need. There are different columns here. And this is always, anytime you go into negative treatment or citing references cases, this is what you'll see. So the treatment. Treatment means how did the case, this case in the future, here it's Rosado versus Doe. You can see it's a 2011 case. How did Rosado versus Doe treat Costa? You can see that they discussed it. How did Masonave treat Costa? They declined to follow it. How did Kurtz versus Krupalo? did not follow or distinguished, meaning something different happened. Connors versus Town of Pembroke. This is a 2012 case. It cited Costa. Judge versus Karai also cited Costa. And you could go through the whole list. I want to just pause here and point out two pieces. This flag here, this yellow flag, this belongs to the judge case. The judge case has a yellow flag. That's just so you know before you even read it. These little quotation marks that are green, these mean that there is a quote from Costa in Judge. The Judge case actually quotes Costa, not just cites it, but quotes it. So going on with the rest of our table here, the treatment, the name of the case, and then literally like a, maybe a one sentence summary. So you get like, maybe like a little teaser about what that case is about the date of the case, the type of document it is, which we've already told Westlaw that we want to look only at cases. So every one of these column will say case. Now the follow two, following two columns are actually pretty important. Depth of treatment. You can see that we have a maximum number of four boxes here. This tells us the case, this Rosado versus Doe, how much did they really discuss Costa? Was it like just a quick little citation or was there an extensive discussion of the Costa case? The more little boxes that are filled in, 
the more the case was discussed. If all four boxes were filled in, that means that Rosado versus Doe gives a lengthy discussion to Costa as precedent. So you can see here, discussed by, it gets three boxes. Down here, Connors versus Ten Town of Pembroke, it cites Costa only two boxes and so on and so forth. And you can see the rest of them look like they are also two boxes. You can see also that, look over here, right where my mouse is, Westlaw defaults to give you, of all the 21 cases, which case gives Costa the most discussion. Why does it do that? Because Westlaw knows that the reason you're looking at citing references is you want to see how other courts have treated Costa. If there's a future case that gave Costa a really long, lengthy discussion, that's the one Westlaw thinks you want to see first. But I want you to look carefully at the source. I mean, not the, the level of court. This is a Massachusetts Superior Court decision. So here we come to one of the Westlaw dilemmas. Rosado versus Doe. For all that it might benefit us because it quotes Costa and discusses Costa, gives it a good in-depth treatment, it's never going to be mandatory authority on us. Remember our triangles. Rosado versus Doe is the lowest level court. So it doesn't mean don't look at it. It doesn't mean don't read it. It just means if you read it and you think, oh, this case is amazing, I want to use it, remember that it's persuasive authority. And if you bring it to your attorney, they might look at you like, okay, but that's a lower court opinion. What do you want me to do with it? I don't want to cite that in my brief to the court. On the other hand, if it's really bad for your client, you might be like, whew, it's only a lower court opinion. It's not mandatory. We don't have to worry about it. So I would just say, if you see it here on Westlaw, you can read it, but I would not get too excited one way or the other, because at the end of the day, it's not mandatory on anybody. The last column here is back to that headnote column that we looked at in the first video on the negative treatment. The headnote number here refers to the headnotes in the Costa decision that are discussed in Rosado versus Doe. So it's the headnote under point the the fourth point of law that Rosado versus discuss Rosado versus Doe discusses so extensively. Whereas if you look at Mason Nave, it's the point of law from headnote number two. You can sort these any way you want. See, sort by, you can sort by the lowest first. You can sort by the court level. Let's try that. So that will automatically give me, looks like it gives me the federal cases first. So it gives me the first circuit of Massachusetts. And then it gives me the, the District of Massachusetts case, and then another District of Massachusetts case, and then the Supreme Court of New Jersey, and then so on. So that's how you sort it by court level. If you look at the left-hand column, we're here looking at cases. Again, I really don't want you to be clicking around these. There's nothing else in here that's going to be mandatory on us. Do you want to read all of it? Go right ahead. But really... This is sort of, again, the double-edged sword of Westlaw. Westlaw will give you, I mean, that's pretty amazing. I could read every single appellate court brief that ever cited Costa. But honestly, I, I don't need to do that, and I don't want to do that. Plus, I actually think some of these things are out of our plan anyway. Yeah, you can't even access these anyway. And the reason you don't is because you don't need to. You don't need to. This, this is what I would really call the rabbit hole of Westlaw. Like, what did some other attorney argue? No, no, no. You're working on your own case, your client, your attorney. Okay. I just wanted to point out, if you scroll down, you can also sort here by jurisdiction. So, like, I could open and say, just show me the Massachusetts decisions. And if I click Mass Appellate Court, it's literally just going to show me those seven cases that are from the Mass Appeals Court. Why would I want to do this? Because if I want to know from 2004 to the present, how have other courts treated CASA? My number one concern is mandatory authority. So if I'm looking at my triangles, I don't need to be looking at superior court.
decisions. I don't need to be looking at decisions from other jurisdictions. So let me tell Westlaw, just show me the ones in Massachusetts that are at a higher level court. There are no SJC decisions that cite Costa, period. Never happened. So I can just ask it to show me these decisions here. But you can see on the left, you can also sort it by depth of treatment. And there's your head note topics. Let's just look quickly at another one. I'm going to go back to, oh, actually, I'll just use my history button. I'm going to go back to Commonwealth versus Nutter because there weren't too many citations for that one either. So again, Commonwealth versus Nutter, we know the decision is still good law because we don't see any negative treatment at all. But let's see what other cases have cited, cited it. It's also a 2015 decision, so it's not like it's brand new, but it's not a super recent decision either. It's not like it just came out this year and we're wondering, you know, who has cited it. So let's click on citing references. Look at that, only two cases. Lots of secondary sources and appellate court documents, but let's look at the two cases that have cited it. Okay, and I, I mean, if we were in class right now, I'd say pause the video and I want you to tell me what you see here. So try that. What do you see here? What have you learned? Okay, so what have we see? We see that there's none of the two cases that have cited Commonwealth versus Nutter give it an in-depth discussion. So if you're looking for some court case, even outside our jurisdiction, that has heavily discussed Nutter as precedent, it doesn't exist yet, right? It might be coming in the future. But we do see that there is two cases that have cited it. One cited it with that two uh, um, depth of treatment. Commonwealth versus Conway, literally it said it gave it a mention. So, you know, again, you might want to look at it, but neither of these cases give Nutter negative treatment. So they obviously just affirm whatever the holding was in Nutter as good law. And then you can see they're both cases. They happen to be both Massachusetts appellate court cases. So if you want to, you can click on them and then read those cases. You can also see that the headnote, again, remember headnote number seven is the headnote that is in Commonwealth versus Nutter. Both of these cases cite Nutter only for the point of law made in headnote number seven. So it just kind of helps you give you an idea of what this case is about. So this is what it looks like when it's a relatively new case you know, only a few years old, only two cases cited. I know I remember we looked up, for example, uh, Roe v. Wade, and I can just do that very quickly. And then on my last video, I will tell you all about how to use the head notes. But let's just really quickly, quickly look at Roe v. Wade, just so you can, you know, if you want to play around. There's a lot of negative treatment, 149 cases, which we know because Roe v. Wade has been narrowed heavily since the time that it was decided in 1973. Actually, I thought it was 72, but it looks like it was 73, so I stand corrected. And then you can look at citing references. It's 4,000 cases. But just so you know, if you wanted to play along with it, you can come into here. Here's your 4,000 cases. And remember, it will default to depth of treatment. So we have a number of depth of treatment cases. And then, of course, I would also really, I would recommend here, like, you know, look at all these different states. You can then, I don't know. I've never actually done this before. I haven't done it in a long time, but I might. Maybe I want to look at just the 42 cases from the Supreme Judicial Court that cite Roe v. Wade. And here they are. So if you want to play with this on your own, you can. I'm going to stop this video here. And then um, as at the time I make these recordings, um, I'm pointing the two up on, West, on a Blackboard for you. And the third one I will be making later. Okay. Thanks, everyone.